When you're new to Tailwind CSS, seeing all of these class names can get a little bit overwhelming. Not to fear, today I'm going to show you how to handle it for every situation that you might encounter. To demonstrate situation one, I have these little hover card components with this little background gradient thing that kind of slides in whenever you hover over one of the cards. Just as a quick call out, all of the code for all of these components can be found on my website, link in the description, along with a bunch of other cool animated components for React and Tailwind CSS. But anyways, I don't really need to call out all of the code for this component for this example. All I really care about is maybe this div right here. So what this div in this example represents is the little background gradient that kind of slides in. This could just as well be a pseudo element or something. And all that I really want to call out here is that just because you have really long class names like this does not mean that you need to overreact and pull this out into its own component or find some other way to kind of split everything up. It's actually part of the power of Tailwind CSS that everything is co-located with the markup. You know, by example, it's very easy now for me to come to my div right here and understand that, okay, right here is all of my gradient code. And I want to change this for whatever reason to, you know, some other color, maybe purple. I can just do that in one spot without having to jump between files. That said, I do totally understand that it's really annoying to have to, you know, scroll over and figure out where everything is. So there are a couple of tips for handling, you know, these really long class names. The first and simplest one is just looking up whatever the keyboard shortcut is for your editor of choice for wrapping text. So in VS Code, for example, I can use Option and Z, and this will automatically wrap my class names, which makes it a lot easier to read. And sorting your class names is also very useful. If you try to do this yourself, that can get really, really annoying. But there is a Tailwind supported Prettier plugin called Prettier Plugin Tailwind CSS. Super easy to set up if you're using Prettier. You just include it in your plugins, in your prettier RC file. And then if I were to, you know, say move this gradient stop up to the front, that could get pretty confusing, right? Because now all of my gradient information is kind of separated from each other. But whenever I save this, it will automatically sort those back into line. Same would go for margin and padding and things like that. If you have super long class names, so for example, something like this, occasionally I will use template literals just to make it a little easier to read. I generally only ever have to do this if I'm using, you know, pseudo elements or something like that. Just trying to call out that just because there's a bunch of class names on one specific element, that alone doesn't really justify pulling it out into a separate component or anything like that. For situation two, I've got this little dropdown component that looks like this. And each of these little links inside of this dropdown are represented by individual A tags that I have not turned into some separate component or something. Each of these are actually repeating the same set of class names. And this is intentional. Now, given these are relatively simple components and they are within the same component within the same file, as opposed to turning these into separate components, what I can do instead is just leverage my code editors multi cursor features to select multiple different lines at once and edit them like this. Now in Visual Studio Code, if you just want to directly add multiple cursors to different locations, you can just hold down the option key and click around like this. But even better for a situation like this, where you have repeated class names like these sets right here, you can just highlight the block of code that you want to select. So in this case, from block all the way to the end of underline, and then I can just hit Command D, and this will automatically select the next repeated same blocks of that same bit of code. As another example, maybe for font semi bold here, which is on both of these H3 tags, I can highlight that block, hit Command D, and it will automatically add another cursor to the next version of font semi bold, which I can then just go and change to whatever font thin and automatically go through and change all of my styles like that. Obviously, this looks stupid. Now, before anyone goes on a rant about, you know, don't repeat yourself or anything, I would encourage you to read through this section of Tailwind's documentation. What I'm talking about here is actually something that Tailwind Labs themselves recommends, and they can put it a lot more eloquently than I'll be able to put it here. So check this out, link in the description. Let's move on to situation number three. Now for situation number three, I have this button component that looks like this, and this has some relatively complex styles, but more importantly, it's a component that I know I'm gonna wanna use in a bunch of different places. So obviously for something like this, it makes sense to actually make it its own component that can then be reused in many places. But there is a couple of issues with doing something like this when you're using Tailwind CSS. And that namely is trying to override sets of styles. So by example, maybe I want my button right here to be able to take in some set of classes. And I do this in React by just adding a class name prop. The way that this works, if you're you know using a different framework is gonna be a little bit different. But point being, I wanna be able to take in some kind of class names and merge those with whatever class names already exist on my button here. Now what I could do theoretically is just take all of these class names and then instead 
instead put them in something like a template literal and include my other class names in here like this. But if we think about this, this kind of causes some issues, right? Because if we scroll back up to our class names, we have a different font weight and a different background color and then a different hover background color like this or a different hover border color rather. And we already have other styles in our class names down here. So right here, I have background neutral 700 and that is going to clash with my background neutral 800 that I'm trying to pass in up here. We can see this even more clearly if I change this to something like background indigo 500. Now we're passing in this class name, but we're seeing that it isn't actually being applied just because the way that the actual CSS is structured that gets sent to the client is preferring this background color right here. Now the fix for a situation like this is that instead of just adding in my class name like this, I'm going to leverage a package called tailwind merge. The import for that is going to look something like this. So this is going to give us a function called TW merge. And this will actually handle for us doing the addition between these two different strings and making sure that the strings that you pass in are the ones that actually get applied to the element. So what I can do is take my string that's already in this class name right here, and then I can call the TW merge function. The first argument is going to be whatever our default classes are. And then after that, I can just pass in my other class names. And this will make sure that whatever we're passing in actually gets applied. To make this a little bit more obvious, let's go back and change this to indigo again, say indigo 500. And there we go. Now, when you actually componentize something is still probably up to you, but if you do, you should just understand that anytime that you wanna override some set of styles, you have to be very careful about how you do it. And this actually leads us into the fourth and final situation. Now to end us off here, I have this little button right here with code represented by this component right here. And what I would like to do is actually turn this into a reusable component that has multiple different variations. So by example, maybe I have a secondary version of this button with a background color of black and a text color of white. So that would look something like like this and then maybe I have smaller versions with you know text small but maybe I also want to have a smaller version with the smaller text that also has you know the background of white again or some other background and you can see where this is going to start to get relatively complicated right so I could take in props for all of these different things so maybe that would be something like variant and size and then we could figure out how we actually want to add all of these classes together so I could have my my class names like this and then I could say you know if variant is equal to whatever, say primary, then we'll do something like class name plus equals to, you know, whatever styles. And you can see how this can get really, really out of hand, right? Having to actually manage all of these things manually and figure out how they should all be added together. But fortunately we do have actually multiple different better solutions, but one that I particularly like, and that is called the class variance authority. So I've just pasted in my example here and we can go ahead and take a look. So this is our old button with no different variants or anything like that. And what we'll see I'm passing in up here is a couple of different buttons. We can delete this one right here actually. And these allow for multiple different sets of styles. So I have two different variants, one for primary, one for secondary that add different colors. And then I can also add different sizes. Maybe we'll have you know a small button and that will shrink down the font size and the padding. And I can extend this as much as I want. Now, if we look at the component itself, it's pretty simple. So this is my little component, which takes in normal button props. And then it takes in these variant props, which are defined by what we're gonna look at here in a second. And it will handle actually doing all of the, you know, addition and things of these classes based on the different props that you've passed in. But the way that CVA actually allows you to add these classes looks something like this. So first of all, I've imported from CVA, class variance authority, as well as these variant props since I'm using TypeScript and back down in my actual call to this function is something that looks like this. So our first argument is going to be whatever our default classes are for this component. So by example, no matter what the different variant is, I want the border radius at this side and a border width of this. All of these things will actually be applied to every single component, but everything that's down here is what's actually going to change. So our second argument to CVA is going to be an object with variants and then optionally compound and default variants. The variance key is going to allow allow you to define the different keys that you want to be able to map to some set of classes. So in my example, I want a variant key as well as a size key, and I want variant to have styles of primary or secondary. So scrolling back up, we'll see that I have a variant prop that maps to either primary, secondary, or null. And then I also have a size prop that's either small, medium, or large that you can see down here based on small, medium, and large. We can also define compound variants, which just means that you want to add some set of styles based on multiple other styles being true. So by example, if we have our size set to large and our variant set to primary, I'm going to rotate the button. If we actually want to see that, 
primary variant right here and then size large. And this will apply a slight rotation to the button. And then finally, we can just set our default variants like this. So if nothing is passed in, we'll use a variant of primary and a size of medium. You can see that if I just go ahead and remove these props right here, and there we go. Now using something like CVA is definitely overkill for a lot of components, but if you're using Tailwind to build out your own design system, whether it be you know an open source thing or just something for your own company or your own project, using something like CVA is definitely always the move, at least for me, it makes it way easier to actually manage these huge different lists of class names and you know chaining conditional logic and things. And it's all packaged up really, really easily into this one little simple function, which you then drop into the class names of whatever the component is that you're building. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for me today, guys. Again, if you want any of the components that you've seen in this video, they will all be linked in the description. If you learned anything, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Until next time, peace.